Welcome and a happy new year to you. Epiphany was a few days ago when we remember the arrival of the Magi or the Wise Men. So in today's service of the Ipswich and East United Reformed Churches, we are going to be looking at the Magi, the reading of from Matthew chapter 1. And unlike every nativity play you've ever seen, Matthew's Gospel clearly shows the Magi didn't arrive on Christmas night, but some time later, though it's not stated when. In the tradition we follow, it is either 12 days after the birth or a year and 12 days after Jesus was born. So let's come and worship God. God's light is shining. It transcends every culture. God's light is shining. The glow of Christmas brings new hope in a new year. God's light is shining and penetrates the veil of darkness in our world. God's light is shining, broadening our experience of the universal Christ. God's light is shining. Let us worship and praise our God of love and guiding star. We sing out loud or in our hearts our first hymn for today, O Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. We offer our prayers today. God, whose peace and goodwill reaches far beyond the church to touch, to touch the whole world, shine like a star in the worship we offer in our buildings or in our homes. Like the Magi of old, we too may be led into your presence 
and even in the very ordinary things we take for granted, may we see the hand of God and the face of Christ. Accept our worship in the beauty of holiness, O Lord, this day. Amen. Forgiving God, whose probing light reaches into the darkest corners of our lives, forgive us for putting the message of the manger behind us so soon. For limiting the meaning of Christ's message to our culture. For limiting his coming to the first century. Forgive us, then use us as part of your light to penetrate the darkness of this your world. The letter to Ephesians says, Though I am the very least of all the saints, grace has been given to me to bring to strangers, I fear, the boundless riches of Christ. Here speaks a forgiven life. That news is both a gift and a call to us. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The reading for this uh, Epiphany celebration is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, and it is, of course, the visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born the King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
pray with me. Come, Lord Jesus, fill our minds with your word. Fill our hearts with your love. Fill our lives with your light. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jim Standerford tells this story. Not, from, not far from the house in which he grew up was a large overgrown open area. On the edge of this area, closest to the housing development, stood a huge old cottonwood tree. It was in America. It was by far the largest tree in that part of town Near the tree ran a small irrigation channel over which someone had constructed a rickety old footbridge. This bridge led to a path which ran through some thick underbrush for about 20 feet. A chained and locked gate across the path put an end to any further exploration. The neighbourhood kids spent a lot of time in that big tree lounging in its shade in summer, playing in the irrigation channel, sometimes falling in, and trying very hard to see and or guess what lay beyond that chained gate. It was a path that stirred their imaginations, but offered no solutions. Then one day the chain was off and the gate was slightly ajar. Several of the children stood there for a long time. What did it mean? Who had done this? Was it intentional? Was it an invitation? Would the children from the neighbourhood dare to explore this new path that had quite suddenly opened? Today I'm talking about a new path and raise some questions. On what new path shall we go in this new year? Our scripture lesson today offers a number of invitational elements for us to consider when we read it by a wonderful analogy. The Magi were observant seekers. They were actively looking for something when they saw the star in the sky. An element of the story of the Magi reminds us of a very important facet of our Christian faith. The light of God's grace shines for all to see. None of us is saved by what we do. God is the prime actor, first shining forth the invitation to a new path of new life for anyone who will come and see. And if we have been coming to church for many years, or never even thought that God existed, the light shines for all. So first, the Magi were waiting and saw the star. Second, they followed it. They received God's invitation and acted on it. Third, when they arrived in Bethlehem, they worshipped the Christ child. They involved themselves and made a commitment to him. Fourth, they returned home to buy a new path. At a minimum, this statement means they did not go back to Jerusalem to report to Herod as requested but perhaps it means more. What would it mean for you and me to go home in a new way? To go home is to stay in or return to a relationship with God. But in this case, it is by a different path. And how do we do that? A new path to return to God. For most of us engage our faith in ways that are very comfortable to us. The ritual in most religious activities has a very comforting dimension to it. As children, many of us learned the Lord's Prayer by saying it in the same way worship service after worship service. 
yet ritual can so easily become rote. We just do the same old thing the same old way over and over. We get the same old results and not much more. Here is where the Magi's story is helpful to us. The fact that the Magi chose a new path home is encouraging for us, but also leads us to a question. What new path to God would be helpful for us? If your primary way of seeking God is to be an activist or serve others, how about this year exploring the path of study and deepening your knowledge? If your path to faith has been through music, how about focusing on your prayer life? If you have found value in an hour of worship each week, how about adding a time of education or prayer each day? If your faith has transformed your spirit, how about sharing your story with others? One new path which I think is always a sure experience of God's grace is for us not to criticise another person's path, but to explore what their path means to them. We don't have to walk their path, but we can learn from their experience and reflect on our own path and find a way for ourselves. If your life is crammed full of activities, perhaps the new path for you would be periodic times of silence so that you might actually hear the still, small voice of God. Perhaps this beginning of a new year is the right time for you to travel a new path to God. All that we do is in, resp is in response to God's gracious invitation to us. Perhaps a new path will help you find a new experience of God's presence in your life. As we begin this new year, I invite you to consider some new path that might help you move closer to God, especially in these strange and uncertain times. Going back to the story from the start of the sermon. The day the children playing in the neighbourhood found the gate opened by that big tree. They did explore the new path, slowly and carefully. It wound through some deep thicket for a distance, then opened to a small cultivated field. What they found was a university professor experimenting with different forms of lettuce. For most of the kids, this discovery was a disappointment. Yet for one member of the group, seeing the neat row of lettuce and the various leaf forms and meeting the professor was the start of a lifelong research in biology. All the children could imagine a lot of new adventures as they stood at that gate. Only one of them who seeing the garden, could imagine a new future for himself. Let God use your best imagination. There are new futures out there. Today we celebrate the Epiphany. The word Epiphany means showing. What is shown in Epiphany is that Christ is the Saviour and Lord of all peoples. Friends, as you meditate on Christ being your saviour, contemplate what new path Christ might invite you to explore today and in this coming year. For there are new ways to discover God. Amen. We sing out loud or in our hearts the hymn, O God, you search me and you know me, based on Psalm 139.
we spend some time as we pray for the world, for those around us and for ourselves. Let's pray. God of glory, we lay the gold of the world at the feet of the Christ child, offering it for transformation from the gold amassed by selfish greed into the gold used for caring generosity, from the gold wielded as an instrument of power into the gold given to the victims of the powerlessness. We pray for those who have wealth and power, especially the rich nations who seem to have so many resources. And for the poor and powerless in the so-called third world, but in our society as well. God of glory, we lay our wealth and prayers at the feet of the Christ child. God of glory, we lay the incense of worship at the feet of the Christ child, offering it for transformation. From the worship that gives us good feelings into the worship that encourages us to seek goodness from the worship performed out of duty into the worship expressing loving delight. We pray for the worship life of the church in the situation we find ourselves able to attend church or at home. That we would discover new ways of worship and find you close to us and for the worship of our everyday lives as we continue to seek you in our daily life. God of glory, we lay our worship and prayers at the feet of the Christ child. God of glory, we lay the myrrh of suffering at the feet of the Christ child, offering it for transformation from suffering that leads to bitterness and despair into suffering that eventually finds hope and comfort, from suffering that seems meaningless and fruitile into suffering that redeems and reveals. We pray for those who are suffering in any way for those on the long queue waiting for operations or treatment, for the staff in hospitals and for carers, for those who are isolated, and for those who suffer with them, for family members and friends seeing their loved ones knowing they can't do very much. God of glory, we lay our suffering and prayers at the feet of the Christ child. God of glory, we ask that you would reveal to us new paths at this time. Help us to discover new ways to worship you Help us to discover you alongside us. Help us to discover new ways of serving you in this world. Be close to us at this time, O Lord, and help us to share your love with those around us. Jesus, Son of God, accept our offering of love. Amen. And we join as we sing our final hymn, Brightest and Best of the Sons of the Morning.
friends, go forth in the light of God to lead others to experience love. Give light to those in darkness to reflect the light to others in darkness. And may the flame of God illuminate us. May the love of Christ fill our lives. And may the Holy Spirit keep us safe all the days of our lives and beyond. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.